If you're like me, you've been waiting for the Division Heartland for quite a long time. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys that enjoy extraction shooters, survival games, this is definitely going to be up your alley. But I wanted to give you guys a complete breakdown of what we know of the game, what you can expect, and a few interesting mechanics that the game plans to introduce that I think the game will stand out from the rest and the slew of games that we're getting upon this genre. So let's kick it off and talk a little bit about the Division Hardline. If you're already a Division agent, high five. If you're new to the Division, welcome on board, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with the Division Hardline. The Division Heartland is a free to play game, which is something I love because anytime you're able to get access to a game without having to pay anything, all you got to do is download and try it out. It gives a lot of people a ton of variety. Another great thing I love about this game is that it's going to be cross platform and cross save. That means if you're on PlayStation on Xbox and you're on PC, you could play together. Also, if you ever decide to upgrade your system, so let's say you have a PlayStation 4 and you decide to buy a PC you'll be able to transfer your character over without having to restart the grind. Definitely big kudos to that. I love it when games do this because it gives it a lot of flexibility. The game is intended to be a PvEP focused game. So that means more PvE content and yes, some PvP content as well, which you're not forced to PvP, but there is PvP advantages if you do so. It's a survival action shooter that's set in a mysterious world town of Silver Creek which once was a very peaceful town, but after the spread of the virus that got spread during Black Friday nonetheless, with a couple dollar bills that were infected with the virus, everybody spread out throughout the country, but for some reason, Silver Creek seems to be like the central hub of a very mysterious thing happening. And not only are you going to have to discover what's going on in this town, but you're also going to have to discover why there is a violent conflict between a group of dangerous rogue agents that are no longer division agents that left the division and also an aggressive band of nomadic survivors it's going to be a very interesting battle between good and evil and trying to figure out who is on the right side and who is on the bad side but if that wasn't all you're still going to need to fight against ai factions and of course other player squads that are also with this area not only dealing with that, but also dealing with the problem of getting contaminated yourself. So there's a very interesting survival mechanic in the game, and we're going to talk about it. So speaking about the survival mechanics in the game, let's talk about how the story will unfold in the division. So there are two types of cycles in the game. There is a day cycle and there is a night cycle. Now, the way the game is meant to be played is the following. You're going to start off by infilling to the uh, Silver Creek. And once you infill, it's going to be during the day. Now, during the day, you're going to be able to go to different stores. You're going to be able to visit houses. And of course, as you're moving through these houses, you're going to be encountering factions that are going to be hostile. And, you know, they're going to be patrolling the area. They're going to be moving containers. And you're going to need to be on the lookout for that. But while you're on the lookout for that, you're also going to be looking for items that are going to be not only unique to that specific area, but you're also going to be looking for crates that will automatically drop like supply drops to get better loot, better weapons, and of course, just like any other division game, these are all going to be on different tiers. Of course, you're going to have your greens, your purples, your yellows, uh, you know, different rarity of weapons that are going to make your life a little bit easier to combat the AI that, or the factions that are currently roaming around the city uh, in during the daytime. Now, as dawn starts settling down and things start getting a little bit darker, you're going to have to deal with more aggressive enemies and yes, pvp because during the night time that is when aggressive enemies more aggressive enemies come out which will have better loot and of course pvp becomes a thing if you play the division think of this like the dark zone that is basically what it is when it gets dark it gets crazy and that is why you need to be prepared now the great thing about this is during the day you're going to learn a couple mechanics that are going to help you during the night time number one is during this game is going to be very hope focused on two major things. Number one, hydration. So that's going to be the main focal point. So if you want to keep your stamina up and you want to be able to move around the world, which I ha I love what they did and they added to the game. They have a slide mechanic now. They have a roll mechanic. And every time you do these type of mechanics in the games, you're going to have to spend a little bit of stamina. And the way you keep your stamina up is by getting hydrated. And you're going to be looking around the world for water bottles or containers that have water to be able to keep yourself hydrated now on top of that there is going to be another element 
which is, of course, the element of contamination, because as you guys know, there is a virus spreading around the world that you're going to need to be worried about. Now, you could go into these contaminated areas if you do have a mask, but these masks do tend to wear out. But the great thing is you're able to survive as long as you have enough masks in your inventory. Now, one beautiful thing that I love that the game did is that it's not like your typical game where there is like a circle and the circle keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller depending on how you want to put it and you just got to escape the circle this is actually pretty interesting the way they did it because they did little pockets of the, the game and i'm putting here an image so you guys can get a better idea that each uh you know each section in the game will have little pa uh, pockets of contamination and these are going to spread randomly they're not going to spread like a circle they're going to spread up in different variants so you're going to have to constantly be looking at the map and how you navigate the map to see where exactly is the best way to actually maneuver on the map and you know try to find masks as much as you fast as you can to be able to survive the toxicity of the game so not only do you have to deal with being hydrated you have to be dealing with not getting intoxicated because if you do get intoxicated it's going to start taking off your health until you completely die and lose everything or you also have to deal with factions and you also have to deal with the pvp if you make it to the night now, if you do make it to the night, you have an option of X filling, and that is by calling in a chopper, very similar to what you used to do in the dark zone when you were, you know, you had all your items, you would call in the chopper, it would come and pick you up, and you would X fill. Now, the great thing about this is when you X fill, you have a place known as the base of operation. This is kind of where like the story leads up to when you're playing the game. Your main objective here is guys is setting up a base of operation. And within this base of operation is where you're going to get, be getting access to the missions you're going to need to do in the game. You're going to be getting access to, you know, weapon upgrades. You're going to get access to crafting. You're going to get access to a lot of sort of items and abilities and different sets that you're going to be able to do to be able to progress in the game. But in order to establish that base of operation, you need to infill the Silver Creek and get the items that are needed to upgrade this base. Now, speaking of base, guys, you're going to be giving an option of having multiple characters unfortunately this time around you won't be able to customize a character but you will have default characters that are going to be available to you guys because what happens is every time you single every single time you infill here you're going to lose health you're going to be hydrated and you can't just be infilling with the same character so you're going to need to give your character a couple time to rest you know take a nap to get his health back to get his contamination level back so you're going to need to be infilling with multiple characters to be able to do your missions as you progress through the game one thing that they want to make sure and emphasize very sure here is that the meant the game is meant to be a survival game at the top of everything so your main objective is to go try to get the missions done but if you can't complete the missions your main objective is to exfil and then come back in with a different character to be able to get that mission completed so in essence extracting and not dying should be your number one priority because you definitely do not want to die with special supplies and special loots that's going to help your base of operation and help you out whenever you guys decide to infill now remember there is the element of pvp so if you stay in the area too long especially when it starts getting you know dust to dawn you're going to be in trouble because there's going to be other players that are going to shoot on site and when you get shot and you go down and you die they will be able to loot you and take all your items now one great thing about the game is that it's going to introduce classes to the system or to the gameplay of the game so picking a class is going to be vital to depending on what type of mission you're doing. Very similar to the division, you're going to have classes. And so far from what we know, there are three classes available in the game. There is a weapon expert, there's a survivalist, and a medic. The survivalist pretty much has the ability to highlight loot behind walls. So this is going to be very good for looting. If, you, you know, if you're a solo player and you want to loot, this is going to be a very good character because you're going to be able to see loot behind the wall so you know where to go, where to get stuff, which is really good. Then you have the weapon expert, which is his main abilities to craft and deploy an assault turret. So it's going to be very good also for solo players. If you guys are in a heavy area and want to fend people off, you're going to put your you know, assault turret and that's going to serve like a second player over there with you shooting as well. And of course, you have your medic. Now, we don't have too much information about the medic, but if we know anything about the division, as you guys know, the medic had a hive, uh, a hive that you were able to deposit or place down. That would give you heal over time or if you needed to get your health back uh you know you were able to do that now as how it's going to play in, in heartland i don't know because i don't know if it's going to help you keep you hydrated if it's going to help you keep intoxicated and just get your health back it's going to be a very interesting concept to see how this uh, medic works 
and I'm pretty sure we'll get some information very soon as possible. Now, the game is set to release in 2024. I'm expecting sometimes between a March and April release for this game. Uh, I do expect maybe a open beta to go before that. So do expect some sort of news coming out very soon, kind of to an early access beta that might be coming for the game. But I am pretty excited for the game. I, I feel like I love the concept that they're doing, which is the way they're doing the virus outbreak in, in the different areas of the map. How it's spreading differently and it's not just in one area, it's in multiple areas. I love the fact that you're able to have to keep an eye on your hydration. I love the fact that you're able to carry multiple masks to go into the contaminated zones and look for loot. And I do like the supply drops that are, are coming down. And not only AIs are trying to get these contaminated areas, you know, supply drops, but also players. And I do like the fact that it's giving people that don't want to engage too much in PvP an option to do go do these missions during the day. And it's giving people a that want to take a little bit more of a risk, high risk, high reward type of thing, and go into the dark, get better loot and better equipment. And I, I like the fact that we have, you know, different sets of classes because it gives you a different play style. You're either you're a solo player or a team player. And I'm pretty sure once, you know, we get our hands on the game, we're going to see what's, you know, what's the kind of like the meta when it comes to like, do I need to bring two medics? Do I need to bring two weapon specialists? Uh, you know, do you know, what type of classes do I need to bring in to just make sure I have a better time playing the game and have a better chance of actually coming on top? But that is our preview of the Division Hardline. Let me know if you guys are excited for the game. If you are, let me know what you guys are mostly excited for. Have you played a Division game before? If you haven't, let me know why not. And if you have, which ones have you played? Let me know all that in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on our next